Welcome back to the Cronkite Sports Report. I'm Emily Bernstein. It was announced today that Brittany Griner is being transferred to a Russian penal colony. The transfer began Friday, just one day after U.S. Embassy officials visited her. The move comes far faster than anticipated. She was not expected to be moved for weeks or even months after her appeal was denied on October 25th. Griner's attorneys were not made aware of the move until the following Tuesday and have said they don't know where she currently is or where she's going. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the move was, quote, another injustice layered on her wrongful detention. In other Phoenix basketball news, the Suns face off tonight against the Timber Timberwolves in Minnesota, but they will be missing two key players. Chris Paul will sit tonight due to heel soreness, while forward Cam Johnson is out for one to two months to rehab his right knee after a successful surgery on his meniscus. The Suns currently have a losing record on the road despite dominating at home and will now be missing vital members in the lineup. Grand Canyon University men's basketball had an exciting opening game on Monday night. Cronkite News reporter Lindsay Selzer experienced the Lopes' first victory of the season and the electric energy of the fans. GCU basketball took on Montana State for their first game of the season. This matchup proved to be a tough one for the Lopes. Montana State, you know, NCAA tournament team picked to win their league, you know, extremely well coached and they hit us in the mouth in, uh, in that first half. They were way more physical. Um, and they could kind of put us on our heels, and you know, they just dominated the half. Uh, I'm very disappointed in, in, in how we came out and matched their physicality and toughness at the beginning. Although GCU ended the first half with a 17-point deficit, that did not extinguish the fiery energy of the fans. Definitely don't win um, if it's not for, for the Havocs and the energy in the building. You know, I thank them for, for staying. You know, someone could have left at halftime and, and they stayed with us and, and, and gave our guys much needed energy when we were tired in those last uh, eight minutes. The Lopes fed off the crowd's vivacious spirit and came back in the second half to eventually defeat the Bobcats 60 to 54. Sophomore Jovan Blackshare Jr. finished with a team high of 18 points. Uh, our Havocs are great. Um, first half, they were pumping us up. Um, we kind of let them down a little bit. Um, we felt it. Uh, we knew we needed to bring our own energy to get them back with us. And when they're behind us, we just thrive more. So, In Phoenix, Lindsey Selzer, Cronkite News. Grand Canyon men's basketball takes on San Diego Christian College tonight, back in GCU Arena at 7 p.m. At Arizona College Prep, a senior on the Knights football team has taken a unique route to where he is now. Cronkite News reporter Ryan Blank went to Chandler to trace his journey. Finding the end zone. Forward Stevens for the Knights touchdown. It's almost a family tradition for Baruch Stevens. You know, it's something that I knew that I could bond with my brother and family, so it was one of those things where I kind of got thrown into it and then really started to embrace it. The Arizona College Prep senior started playing football at the age of six. Baruch never really had a chance because we're just a football family. You know what I mean? We just, we, I, I've grown up with football. Jeanette's grown up with football. But Baruch wasn't always destined to grow up around the game. Hey, Considering his journey to playing under the Friday Night Lights, began 8,900 miles away in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. Baruch was put up for adoption by his birth mother at the age of five. She wanted me to have a better future. She knew at that time she wouldn't really be able to provide the opportunities that I would have had in the U.S. The Stevens, who had two naturally born children and one adopted daughter from China, were looking to adopt again. And in May of 2010, the couple traveled to Ethiopia to bring home their son. Adoption was just never a plan B. It was just a, a when we were going to do it. It's just kind of our way of life. There's kids who need homes. We have a home and we have the room. So that's why we did it. Though Baruch did not fully comprehend why his birth mother put him up for adoption, as time went on, he not only learned to understand why, but is grateful for his mother's decision. It's one of those things where I, I'd be proud and I'd want to thank her because there have been so many opportunities that arise for my adoption and I know that it was just a hard decision for her. Baruch is thriving. Here in Arizona, 
and is taking advantage of every opportunity that comes his way. When he was younger, he tried other sports, like soccer, but ultimately he found his second home here on the football field. You always want to you know, coach the really good kids that do everything the right way, uh, and he's one of those kids. His effort and leadership, you want to follow the kid. We won the lottery with Baruch. I love all four of our kids, but he is the one I know I can count on. He's a constant. That's what I love and appreciate about him. I can't imagine our family without him. When Baruch reflects on the road he has traveled, he draws strength from the obstacles he has overcome. I know that it was a big journey, a lot of people couldn't necessarily relate to it, but it's something that I'm proud that I went through. While his days as a knight are numbered, Stevens looks forward to continuing his journey with football and beyond. In Chandler, Ryan Blank, Cronkite News. Stevens is currently weighing his options between different schools in Minnesota to further his football career. That's it for today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Maddie.